Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video over on the channel by the name of Leah's Chill. Today we are here with a brand new video. We have the new exclusive character inside the game today in the form of Hoji. Now, Red Tongue Hitman is a really, really curious thing to call him, but I believe that's what his actual Queen K is called, and so that's kind of the intention behind it. But it's very curious that they actually chose to have like the next, like the third exclusive character inside the game be a version of Hoji, which is, I want to say, a character that's much less beloved than quite a few of the characters already around. But they're dropping exclusive uh, Hoji right after dropping the Tatara and Misaka banner. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to cover this because I was just kind of busy last week. Um, but these two characters are pretty interesting. Didn't get either of them so far, but... We'll kind of talk about them at some point, I'm sure. Uh, likely when we get to like the Owl videos, we'll talk about them, because they don't really have a lot of places except for specific like game modes. But we are likely going to be doing the this banner um, up to step like 100. So I'm gonna be going up to wah, the first pity right here, and we're just gonna do that for the next couple of videos and have a good time with it. Obviously, I've just kind of been playing the game and enjoying it. I want to try out this Hoji because I feel like he'll be one of the characters that's pulled on less. Um, but I'm also just very curious to see uh, if I can get any dupes of the characters I also care about inside the banner. Obviously, I'm pulling today 95% for Juzo. Uh, I, I like Hoji. Hoji's cool. He'll be great for the debuff team. Um, otherwise, love to pick up a couple more copies of Hiroko. Uh, a couple more copies of Toka Rabbit would be nice. But I think my plan right now, Rainbow, cool, 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 cool. Uh, my plan right now, I think, is going to be to do one multi on every premium banner. And then beyond that, I'm going to be trying to save up mostly for the exclusive banners that are around and trying to kind of plan around that. Because it is kind of fun to just toss one multi at the premium banners and see if you get the new characters to test them out and have fun with them. I'm not going to be wailing or going crazy. Hoji! That's Hoji! Yeah! Holy shit, I actually got him. Um, that was on the second multi on the entire exclusive banner. I had not had that sort of luck before. That's crazy! Yo! Okay. So this actually might be a real-ass video today, then. Um... So his main thing is he causes splash damage to every one of the characters, so he does the same thing, I believe. No, I think Hachikawa's was slightly different. One moment. Yeah, no, he was preemptive. So this is a brand new trait in the game in that case. And his main thing is he's hitting one target, and then 30% of that damage is going to everyone else. And along with that, he will also... So he has Scorched, which is going to be like a burn style ability, um, which is 30% of his attack. We have his, when your turn ends, the regen rate and restoration rate and vampirism of enemies are reduced by 15% each. So when you end your turn three times, you will automatically have them debuffed by that 45% less restoration and vampirism, which is kind of nice actually. Spread debuff as your turn starts, duplicates a random debuff on an enemy and applies it to a random enemy as well. So this, I feel like, is where he's going to shine. At limit 6, he gains the ability to make it so his Scorched, that was only applying to one enemy, uh, right here as you can see, gets applied to all the enemies afterwards. And he's also duplicating any debuffs that also includes Lethal, that includes Vulnerable, that includes Blood Piercer, Basically, you could inostensibly use him to make it so you're giving single target strong characters that have debuffs the ability to debuff everybody on a turn just because he's strong enough and it's just a matter of keeping the debuff on the enemies for over one turn so it remains at the start of your turn to be duplicated. Because obviously, if Vulnerable wears off at the end of the first turn, you will lose that duplication. Um, but I'm definitely going to end up using him. Uh, I don't know if my plan for today is going to be to do a showcase of explicitly him, but we're just going to go ahead and keep on talking about the stuff inside the game right now. I'm going to do the rest of my multis. 
I'm going to hit pity 100 on this banner because I do think that if you're going to commit to a banner like this, it's more worth it just to go all the way and make it so you're committing to it. So you're at least getting the guaranteed SSR and moving towards... That was three dead multis. Um, you're moving towards getting more SSR dupes like this will be and moving towards kind of becoming a lot better off in terms of your account. Because early on, you're basically trying to collect one of every character and then get those characters you're using up to three star to get their passives. And beyond that, it's just a matter of luck who you end up using. That's two! That's fucking two. That is absolutely absurd. I guess Hoji and the debuff team is going to end up being like my main squeeze. I never chose for this to be my casing, but no of characters on the other banners either got any dupes. Both Arima and Kaneki are at zero. Hoji just blessed me as if he has just decided I am his champion and I will parade it. What is Super Scorched actually, or Super Splash? So when you get to six star with Hoji, Ultra Splash will increase from 30% damage to 40% damage to all enemies. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah, he has really good single target damage, and then he's using that single target damage to nuke out everyone around him as well. Um, I feel like he will end up specializing in like a primarily attack focused build at the moment. So I'm going to try to build him here. I'll swap Kaneki set onto him so you can see. Basically, I'll probably be going for just this. Let me know if you guys have any ideas of how I would be able to improve Hoji beyond that. Because I do like the attack build a lot, and if he's going to be doing splash damage constantly, it's going to be really important for his attack stat to be like high, 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 high. And his power strike is increases crit rate uh, by 10% for one turn. Interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely going to commit to him for sure. Uh, otherwise, they've kind of just been updating the game as the weeks have been going on, and they did announce... Uh, yeah, they're just fixing things all the time, which is not what Dark War felt like at all. This actually makes me very excited. But in the update on December 15th, which was two days ago, which the banner dropped today at 4 p.m. on December 17th, we got Set Sail Carnival event new features unlocked. So they unlocked a new Paragon team thing that I haven't tried out just yet, but I really need to do so, so I'll probably read up that a little bit later. Um, they did... They added skip function to beginner's guide. They added number of regional breakthroughs levels have been increased to 80. Oh, so they increased the levels of some breakthrough levels. Okay. You can now turn tablets into premium bond tablets, which I imagine was for the highest level that you couldn't do before. They added triple speed to the game, so now you can grind even faster. Lineup setups now include includes a shortcut for character development. And the way that that looks actually is kind of cool. Um... So, as you can see, this is like my main grinding team now. I've been using Juzo along with like the debuffers and just making it extreme AoEs. But if we go over to uh, Shinohara and Hinami here, you can see that it just straight up has like be can be upgraded buttons that makes it so much easier just to be able to look at every part of the game and have no issues. It feels like everyone's trying to, or it feels like the game's trying to push you to get everyone up to level 80. And then beyond level 80 is like, pick the characters you're going to be using quite a bit. And so I have been splitting my resources a little bit more, but I'm, I tried to make sure that at least my main grinding team and like my other comparable teams are still pretty maxed out. Otherwise, what else do we get? Okay, so player credits in the arena now reset the starting credits of, the, of each tier after weekly finalization. So... They don't carry over between seasons, which it ends on Sundays, which by the way, give a shit ton of diamonds. I've been enjoying it so far. Uh, guarantee mechanism. A minimum point guarantee mechanism is now included inside organization battle, so you can you will always get some sort of uh, points if you do succeed. I added accept all and decline all on organization, which is awesome. Uh, added organization function to battles, optimized art resources, battle effects, localized texts. Just all around good. And they also added sweep functions to every single assignment in the game that is battle focused, uh, that isn't special. Wait. 
I thought it was every one that wasn't special. It looks like it's all the ones that are S and below. So every single uh, assignment that you can do inside the game now, you can sweep as long as it is S rank or below, which would be S, A, B, C, D, obviously. I like what they've done so far. And increases damage effect and everything. Okay, so this is actually what I wanted to read today as like the main part of this video. I found this to be really, really interesting. So hi, we're the developers of Tokyo Ghoul Break the Chains. First, thanks to many, or thanks for your support for Tokyo Ghoul Break the Chains as a server has launched. We apologize for not being able to bring you the perfect gaming experience. Since the testing in April 2023, we've been dedicated to refining and enriching the gameplay, hoping that you would have more fun with the in-game through diverse modes and content. Therefore, we added all new gameplay modes such as Carnival and Organization Marathon Combat before open beta. Since then, we've also made optimizations to lowering difficulty levels of event quests and increasing the drops of instances. So they've kind of just been listening to feedback even during the open beta and using that to influence a lot of what they're doing. They're also saying that the Carnival set sail thing was something that was part of the open beta but didn't come out on the release of the game. So clearly they had this kind of planned out for a little while. The game has been released for about a month, and despite our team's tireless efforts to solve existing in-game issues, a fair number of problems still persist. We'll be watching a bug video here in a second, actually. Our sincerest lack of apologies for frequent updates and maintenance caused by our recent lack of preparation. We're also aware that we haven't been communicating or responding with players as frequently or quickly as expected. Our team will be working to provide you with better support. In this log, we'd like to respond to some frequently asked questions and share with you our plan for future optimizations and updates. We'll also wish that from now on, we can build a more stable connection with players through these regular updated de dev logs as we work together to make the game better. This right here feels like they're talking to me. Now, I don't want to call it out as like they're watching these videos, obviously, as developers on the game. Uh, I, tr I was going to reach out to them, but I didn't get the chance to actually write up a full scale email. But this makes me very happy to see because this is what a game needs to succeed inside 2023 as a live service game. As, as long as this is their commitment, it means a lot. And so they adjusted arena rules, they kind of just worked around things, they improved disconnection stuttering issues. Um, because the game is available in different regions and devices, it may vary from person to person, it's hard to avoid compatibility issues. So that means wherever they're hosting the servers out of is what you're directly connecting to. That's likely why it takes me like a good 5-10 minutes to load up the game in the first place. I'm over in Canada, which is like the like one of the furthest possible places in terms of flights from like the Asian Pacific region. So just is how it is. Best response on social media. So they're going to be doing uh, more stuff inside their own personal Discord, which I'm just, just kind of chilling inside. I haven't really typed anything. On the Facebook, the editors will be replying to more questions. And our special community monitors or moderators inside the Korean community will be answering more questions efficiently too. In addition, we'll be updating you on the newest optimization plans and progress through developer logs from now on. Feel free to leave your suggestions and feedback in the comments below to help us improve the game, which obviously this is posted on Facebook as well. And then they gave you more stamina recovery methods, battle experience optimization, so faster, show you the damage dealt by every one of the characters. Uh, add sweep to assignments, optimize conditions for sweeping exploration stages, added successive battle for crusade battles where you can use multiple crusade coupons and required stamina to complete one battle or receive multiple battles according to the battle result. This is basically seven deadly sins. You can do three of the demon bosses at the same time and you'll get all three of those runs worth of drops through using three tickets, but you won't actually have to run it three times during the day. So it kind of gives you less time of just grinding out your stuff every single day. So that is excellent. Additionally, we'll gradually adjust the difficulty levels and mechanics of some instances in Crusade, Force Challenge, so more players can have some more fu ch fun, challenging, harder instances, which I was talking about um, in my last video, actually, on Tokyo Ghoul, about how they could always afford to give a little bit more difficulty in terms of the quests. It's just early on inside the first Nora one, it was so hard to beat the first boss. People got discouraged and stopped doing the grinding. But I was saying they can definitely afford to still make it harder and still give us a challenge to make it worthwhile to grind these events and make it like the most important part of our days, for example, to do our three runs of the raid bosses. So this is cool. And it seems like 
as time goes on, it's likely that the difference between the easy, normal, hard, and abyss levels is going to get a little bit wider in terms of what power they're expecting out of it. So much lower for easy, much higher for abyss. And we'll probably get another like difficulty stage afterwards as well. But very, very cool. We're happy to add more stuff for organizations. But just like get rid of everyone, add everyone. New modes, they're going to be adding... Okay, so they're talking about carnival events. The new region breakthrough is the only part of it. Be more features such as Paragon Arena that in the future. So yeah, all of these tabs inside Carnival are going to be like different things. I haven't even used Carnival Arena yet either. Maybe we'll finish off this video after I... I'm going to read the dev note. Uh, we're going to watch a bug video because I got sent it on uh, the Discord. And then maybe we'll just do a couple of those challenges and see how it is. Uh, additionally, server launch, limited time events. Once again... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is actually really important. So... We are also continuously optimizing the in-game text by polishing the character skill descriptions and announcements to provide you with more in-game information. What's more is we'll be gradually, gradually adding characters that you've been waiting for with unique attributes and skill effects. So I see that, and I'm hoping that's them implying that they might be hiring an artist on the team, so they would be putting like a little bit more effort into the exclusive banner units and like really gassing it up. But that's me assuming. Uh, unique attributes and skill effects might just be like, we're, we'll add more characters that have more things they can do. Like more passives that would make you have to think harder about how to build teams. And finally, once again, we apologize for not providing you with a better gaming environment, and we are grateful for your continued understanding and support since server launch. The above mentioned optimizations will be gradually incorporated into the game, so please stay tuned regularly for release of these new, fe new features. On the other hand, the optimizations and content updates may require server shutdowns for maintenance, which we apologize for in advance. We'll continue to refine every mode and character and fix in-game issues. We're also welcome to send us feedback, which will gradually improve our gameplay experience for all players. Thank you. Tokyo Ghoul Break the Chains Committee. They have a committee! How about that? And obviously just more stuff here. Um, that's awesome. That right there, that dev note, I would be fine if that was even something we're just getting like once every like two months, if not like a little bit longer. Um, as long as they're continuously like putting stuff into the game and it doesn't just become silent. So it's not like it's super important for them to communicate constantly, but that reassures me so positively that it makes me very happy. Now, we're just gonna transition now. I wanted to show off a bug that is currently present inside the game that I found to be so intriguing that I now really, really, really want to build this character. So this right here is Take Hiroko. So right now inside the game, we know Hiroko isn't all that great. He's just kind of like a vampirism unit. Uh, I do have a copy of him all the way down here with two dupes inside him. And I wasn't really expecting a lot out of him, honestly. He's just kind of whatever. He has Blood Rage, which is really nice for max HP builds, and so he's good at having really high HP. But apparently, when you fully max him out, and I, I for Ultra Vampirism, we'll just look at this real quick so I, I can make sure that you guys understand this too. For when you max him out to six star, triples Vampirism when dealing damage and causes an additional damage equal to 25% of stolen HP. So if he has triple of the heal, and he's doing 25% of that damage to every one of the characters he's hitting. And he's AoE. It seems that a 6-star version of Hiroko... With buffs, of course, because they used the Uta card before. So he will have the extra percent buff, 7% uh, buff, on all of his stats. But, obviously, like, that's hard already. But that is already, like, a really, really hard-hitting card. And that's just because this person has a 6-star Hiroko and it's maxed out. 264,000 damage is pretty much competing with the levels that Kaneki puts out in single-target DPS, but it splits it among everybody. Now, it ends here, and this is the end of the combo. 374k. The passive for the 6-star hasn't hit yet. So... The damage just tripled. <laughs> um, it is now 972,000 damage. Now, if this is intentional, 
then Hiroko might be one of the best units in the game right now. But I think that the thing that's happening right now is it's still treating every one of the units that you're fighting as if they're taking the 25% of all stolen damage as one big oomph. And so if he's just taking a little bit of vampirism, he'll take a mile in terms of the damage he's dealing at the end of it. And it's just a matter of like building out your vampirism and building out like your ability to survive. Obviously, if you use a Juzo card earlier too, we've gotten like an extra follow up too uh, and do extra damage. So this is like the Korean server and Hiroko, the fact that I have a couple of dupes of him, I'm actually kind of excited now. Um, I, I felt like I was getting shafted, getting copies of him. I felt like I was getting pretty unlucky in general with my gacha pulls up until recently. I got like explosive luck on the most recent Amon banner to get Owl and stuff like that. Um, but low key, him having two dupes, I think he might be one of the best answers if I get more copies of him to be one of the best six stars in the game right now. Now, I really, really want to see how it goes. Obviously, he's buffing himself constantly as well. And he will work really well on the mono skill team that's focusing around max HP with Kori Ui, uh, the Yoshimura Owl. And I, honestly, I really like this Juzo for everything. This Juzo's like unit is so fucking good. Um, I'm probably gonna like him as well. But we'll see how Hoji is in tomorrow's video. For now, that's pretty much gonna be everything. I was gonna do one of the, like, carnival set sail things, but I think I'm just gonna save that for tomorrow and we'll just chill for today. Um, so tomorrow, we'll be back with a showcase of the brand new exclusive character, Hoji. And we'll showcase the fight against the Total Bedlam. The event that just came out that has a new Noro boss fight that's pretty easy, honestly, but still going to be pretty fun. For now, thanks for watching, take it easy, and of course, bye for now.